Now I'd like to introduce the bot for Templator. This is a set of features that enables fully automated versioning, rendering, and distribution of video content. It does require a subscription-based license to use, but it is affordable and scalable. So no matter the size of your organization, it should meet your needs. We can see we've got an open project here. And down below, we've got the spreadsheet that's driving the versioning of this project. And over here, we've got the Adobe Media Encoder, which we'll make use of at a later point in time. Now, the first thing to realize about the bot is that there is a special header required to use it. So in the spreadsheet, you basically create a new column. And I'm going to go ahead and call this render dash status. And this is a reserved term. So you must type in render dash status. Now, within the values for this column for each row, I'm going to type in ready. And this is also a reserved word. So when the bot is enabled, what it does is it examines all the rows in your spreadsheet and it picks out the ones that are ready to be processed. Once it does that, it processes them in the same fashion as if it, you actually clicked the replicate or the render button. When it's done, it updates the spreadsheet for you. So it's a pretty clever tool in that it can update the spreadsheet while it's doing its job. The first thing I do is simply enable the bot. So I click on this button right here on the templator panel. When I do that, the entire user interface kind of shuts down, but we'll take a look here at our spreadsheet. And you'll see that once it does the initial check, it's going to change this term from ready to queued. Now, what that means is that templator is now about to process it. And you can see here that it's actually doing its job. It, once it processes it, it you know, does the same thing as if you were to hit render and it saves the file out to wherever you need it to go. Now notice though that the bot is updating the spreadsheet. Now this is a very unique feature to the bot and it should make your life easier. So if you, for example, um, add a ready row after it's done processing all of those, um, the next time the bot encounters new, these values here, it will again just queue them up. So that's how you actually just simply enable the bot. Now, most importantly is that you create this render dash status column and that you, you know, set the value for each row that you want to process to ready. The bot will update the values as it does its work. Now, let's go ahead and just disable the bot. So this will disable any checking against the render status column for us. I'd like to show you some of the preferences that come with the bot. So here you can see we've got this new section called bot settings. So let's take a look at this group and examine what each setting does. The actions preference allows you to tell the bot whether it should render, replicate, or do both for every render job it encounters. So here the bot will only render out a versioned composition, but if I check this box right here next to replicate, it'll render and replicate the version comp. So this is useful insofar as if you want the bot to send versioned comps to the Adobe Media Encoder, you would want to perhaps uncheck render, leave replicate checked, and then make sure that the send replicates to Adobe Media Encoder option under the replication set of options is checked. The bot name option allows you to name your bot. And this is required when you have more than one bot checking against the same data set. Essentially, the bot name allows you to distribute render jobs across different activated bots. Okay, so this next one right here that says check every five minutes for new Google Sheets data. This allows you to specify the period of time that passes by between checks for new ready data. The minimum amount of time that has to pass by is five minutes. And that's so that we don't abuse the Google Sheets API. This next preference right here, the one that says allow up to 20 rows to be queued at one time. Well, this value here limits how many ready rows can be queued at any given time. So even if you have, for example, 200 ready rows, only 20 would be queued every time the bot found ready data. This next set of preferences allows you to specify shell commands for what we call bot events. For example, you could specify a command for the bot to execute after it processes each job, after it processes a group of jobs, and when the bot disables. So you might want to send yourself an email, for example, 
in case the bot goes down. Now, this checkbox here allows you to send job details as arguments to these commands. Okay, so now that we've gone over these preferences, let's go ahead and show how two different bots can render against the same spreadsheet. So <clears throat> for this example, I'm gonna set this to render and not replicate. I'm going to leave the bot name as Hal, and I'll just hit OK. Now, I've got a Windows Virtual Machine running After Effects, and it's got a similar project file. It's the same one, but with uh, you know the dash win to identify it as Windows. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the preferences here. And you can see here, I've got it set to render, and this bot's name is Gertie. So let's go ahead and check out the spreadsheet. Now, there's nothing in the spreadsheet currently that identifies which job should go to which bot. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a new column, and I'm going to give it the reserved word bot for the header. And here in these values, I'm going to assign a bot to every job. So for this row, I'll do how, this one will be how, and this one will be how, but then this one will be Gertie, 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 and then how. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is enable the bots and see what happens. So let's take a look. I'm going to enable this one, click that. I'm gonna go here and enable that one. And let's take a look at the spreadsheet after we've enabled both of them. You're gonna see that Hal is going to grab these three and Gertie will grab this one, this one, and this one. Actually, it's not gonna grab anything because none of these are set to ready. So even though these jobs have been assigned to bots, these the render status still needs to be set to ready. So what I'll go ahead and do is just hit ready there and then hit enter and then just kind of copy that down like that. Okay, so now the bots will uh, grab the jobs that they have assigned to them. So let's take a look. You can see, you know, everything's queued up, things are being processed, and things are being done. So, you know, we can see that the Mac is doing its job, and we go over here, and we can see that the Windows machine is doing its job as well. And keep in mind, it's only grabbing the jobs that are assigned to it. So when everything's done, um, you know, the bots just kind of sit in the background and do their thing. Uh, there's no reason that you'd actually have to be in front of After Effects and, you know, you can have as many bots as, you know, you're licensed to have. So if you have a render farm of, let's say, 10 machines and you have 10 licenses, you can run those 10 machines against your central database or your spreadsheet. Now, more than likely, you're not going to want to be, you know, entering data right into your spreadsheet via a spreadsheet interface. You might want to use a web form, for example, to get the data in here and have After Effects respond to that data. So for the next example, what I'm gonna show you is how we can connect a web form to Google Sheets and have After Effects read the data that the form submits. So let's take a look. So I went to this website called jotform.com and this offers anybody the ability to create a basic web form that they can then use elsewhere on the web. And what's nice about JotForm is that you can integrate it directly into Google Sheets. So it's a great tool if you don't wanna spend the time developing a front end. Now the downside is of course that you can't make the form do specifically everything that you want. But for this example, I thought it would be a great tool to use just so you can understand the ramifications of what you can do with the web and AE. So here we can see we've got a web form that I built and it's got a few you know fields that are related to this project file. It's for a reminder video. And <clears throat> if we preview it right here, you can see that you know this is what it looks like if I were just to open it up in a browser. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to first integrate this so that the data that gets input into here gets added to a spreadsheet. So let's take a look at how that's done. Now in JotForm, you just click on this integrations chain link here and what that shows you is a list of all the different types of integrations that JotForm offers. So for this one we're going to use the Google Sheets integration so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and what that'll do is it will ask us to authenticate a specific account at Google Sheets so that you know it can actually do the integration in the, uh, in the correct spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and click accept here and now it says authorization successful click next to continue. So we go ahead and click next and we'll just leave this as uh, JotForm for the folder and then spreadsheet name, we'll do reminder video form. 
something like that. So let's go ahead and click Next. And then it takes some time, but it initializes a spreadsheet, and then it shows up here. But you know, it offers the URL a direct link to that URL. But I'm going to go ahead and close this. And then here, what I'll do is just reload. And we'll see, hopefully, all of the different sheets. And there it is. There's the reminder video form. So let's go ahead and open that up. OK, so it looks like we have some data from a previous you know, integration. And that's all right. The only issue is that these values here are ready. And these are just test rows when I was building out the web form. So I'm going to go ahead and manually just set them to done so that the bot doesn't pick them up when it is actually checking against the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and make sure that the templator bot is set up correctly. We're going to go ahead and choose preferences on our templator panel. And here under bot settings, we can see that our name is set to how. So this is actually an issue because if you have a name assigned to a bot, and there is no bot column in your spreadsheet, then the bot for templator will not pick up any new jobs that are ready. So let's just go ahead and delete this for now. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And next, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, ensure that this After Effects project is actually hitting up this form that Jot form created. So uh, it doesn't look like it's doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Google here. And I will make sure that you know we're hooked up to the submissions worksheet in the render, I'm sorry, the reminder video form. So I'm going to click OK. All right, so now that templator is hooked up properly to this spreadsheet, um, let's go ahead and you know enter in some new data. But before I do that, let's go ahead and enable the bot. So the bot is enabled, it's checking against this render status within this spreadsheet. So now if I go to here and say preview, I'm going to go ahead and open the form in a new tab. And for name, I'm just going to go ahead and choose uh, something like Charlie. And for month, let's go ahead and do February you know, 3rd. And the theme is going to be winter. And we'll choose a file. And I've got these images of Las Vegas on, sitting on my desktop. So I'm going to choose that one. And I'll just click Submit. And what's going to happen is we're going to see a new row of data appear in our spreadsheet after it finishes the submission process. Once that new row of data appears, uh, we'll see that you know Templator is going to latch on to the ready status of that row and queue it up and then process it. So let's take a look. You can see that it's already been queued. After Effects is now responding appropriately. And there's the Charlie name right there. That's fantastic. OK, so now it's done. So let's go ahead and try that again. We're going to go ahead and go back. And instead of Charlie, let's go ahead and do something like Kelly. And for month, let's just change it to a different season so we can see the colors change. And we'll do, you know, like 29th. And this is going to be fall. And we'll do choose file, select a different image. And we will now submit that up. Oh, and this is saying that our file size can't be that big. So We'll go ahead and do, uh, let's see, this one right here. And we'll do Submit. This is going to submit data into the Google spreadsheet. Notice that the bot is actually still checking data. Here's our new data values. And there's the bot responding to, to it. Here's the Kelly. Now here's the, the image. All right, so that's really a fantastic feature. Um, there's a lot that you can do with it. Keep in mind that you don't actually have to use JotForm. You can develop your own front-end application to interface with a Google Sheet. That means you can make a mobile app. You can use something on the web. You can, you know, you can develop something with you know, strict JavaScript or HTML. And as long as you submit new data with a ready value under the render status, and you've got your bot enabled, you'll be able to version video without actually having After Effects uh, open. So let's get into a little bit more detail about how these images are actually uploaded to After Effects. If we scroll down here, we're going to see that we've got this image column. And the values here are just HTTP URLs. And these are created by the JotForm tool. So you can see here this image label corresponds to this image header here. And then this file uploader, well, what that does is it allows users to upload files but JotForm places it on some server and then inserts the HTTP reference right here. So when Templator encounters this type of reference, what it does is it attempts to download the file that it's referencing 
directly to the footage folder, at which point it can then insert that footage into the dynamic layer that you set up. That's essentially how it works when you reference cloud-based footage. Now let's take a look at how the folder structure looks like when it actually performs that download. I'm gonna bring up the finder window for the footage folder here that I've specified, and that's right here. And you're gonna see this new folder called Templator Downloads. Well, if we open it up, you can see here that Templator is actually downloading the file and you do have the option to specify, you know, whether or not you want it to be prepended with a certain value from the row or not. So this is where all the downloads will be placed when Templator encounters HTTP URLs. So up until this point, we've looked at how the bot behaves when it is using the internal render queue within After Effects, but you might want to use the Adobe Media Encoder. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up the Adobe Media Encoder to work with the bot. Now, what I'll show you here is specific to the OS X version. With the Windows version, it's a, you know even simpler. But for OS X, the first thing you want to do is you'll want to add a watch folder to the Adobe Media Encoder panel, and you want to point it to the output folder of the, um, you know, where your panel is outputting all the footage. So we're going to do that. So now this is watching, the Adobe Media Encoder is watching this folder. So whenever something happens to, you know, get replicated, it will, you know, render it out. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that this data source is connected to this spreadsheet and it does look like it is. Um, we're going to then enable the bot, but before we do that, let's check the preferences. So here, for example, instead of just render, we're gonna replicate. And by replicating, we can then send replicates to Adobe Media Encoder and click OK. So now we're gonna go ahead and enable the bot. Let's go back down here before we do that to make sure there's nothing ready. Click enable. And let's go ahead and preview this form, open up a new tab. And right here, let's just go ahead and do something like Robert. Um, let's go ahead and do, you know, November uh, 10th, and this will be fall. And we'll choose a file here. It'll just be, you know, just any ordinary file. And we click on submit. And now what's going to happen is, you know, we're going to get a new row of data. But instead of rendering directly within AE, it's going to send a replicated comp right into the Adobe Media Encoder to be processed. So let's take a look. So you can see it's processing, it's done, and now a little bit later we should see the Adobe Media Encoder, um, you know, take hold of that, that composition and process it. Okay, so there we go. You can see even there that, that had the Robert. Now let's take a look at this uh, output file name. So it certainly has the solid assembly uh, you know, target comp that we have. So Templator did devise the output name, but then it's got this weird, what's called a hash. And this is just a random sequence of letters and numbers so that there's never any, you know, intersection of two files having the same name. And this is here in the case that there's no ID column in a spreadsheet where the bot is checking. So if, you do, if you're not using the bot, the replicate and the render function will just use the row. But since the bot behaves a little bit differently, we just give it a random uh, hash that is generated internally in, in Templator. 